Ah, the splendor. It was a beautiful day like any other, hanging out with the dogs in the octopus's garden, watching the starfish races. When my shell phone rang, it was Theo. It was the annual call to arms for the Maker's Challenge. This celebrated muster is always riddled with an overinfusion of feelings, giddiness, anxiety, excitement. It incites an inner turmoil of ideas vying for fruition and the humbling query of one's own worth to rise to the engineering of the challenge. What will I do this year? Where will my inspiration come from? If only I knew. Back down on the beach. And we are back on the beach. Back down on the beach. If only I could figure out where to get some inspiration. Back to the channel. We are down on the beach. Seems like it's been ages. Welcome back to the channel. We're back down on the beach and here we are again at the beach. Surprise! <laughs> I'm Karen and... Okay, okay. You don't have to hit me over the head with it. I guess I should get right to work then, huh? For this project, we're going to make most of our elements from scratch. That includes our sheet metal. I said sheet, sheet metal I said. This copper is really thick, so we're going to have to do some modifying with elbow grease. Oh, oh, she said sheet. Do you think she ever had a man? Maybe my jaws and a two-year-old. Yeah, with a chainsaw. <laughs> How much coffee do you have to drink to saw that fast? <laughs> like, I don't know, but she always totally loses her sheet metal when I dip my tongue into her morning coffee. So you can see how fat this copper is. Here is a penny. The copper was 14 gauge, and we're trying to even it up with 18 gauge. The penny is somewhere in between. Torching the copper makes it more malleable for the next step. Great studio hacks. How about an anvil that is actually train track? Sure. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, tool hacks right there. I highly recommend this exact kind of therapy for any silversmiths that are upset about the rising silver prices. Very So we can see that this piece of copper has really changed already quite a bit. I'm using the round part of my hammer to create a hammered texture and that is deliberate plus it definitely moves the metal pretty fast to get the result that we want which is getting this whole piece of metal thinner. So we already have uh, come down at least a gauge and you can see how much metal it seems like we have more of as far as the sheet size goes. That is the objective. And since this is getting bigger fast, we're going to take it down a little bit. Easier to hold on to as a big piece, but we only actually need a smaller piece. So we're gonna cut it right here and continue hammering. Huh. She's off the rails. Oh, 
Yeah, total crazy train. <gasps> She's getting hammered. <laughs> Sterling silver and copper, but what am I doing? Indeed, what am I doing? Well, I'm doing it fast. If I could only pull a bow through a fiddle like this or a claw hammer a banjo this fast, the grass would be bluer on my side of the fence. Yeah, but seriously, we're evening out these pieces so we can meld them into one piece of amalgamated sheet metal. A horse of at least two different colors, if you will. Sterling and copper patchwork. For this chore, I love solder paste, so I'm slathering it on the puzzle pieces, preparing it for the torch. Like, whoa, watch out! Watch out, <coughs> torch, sister! <laughs> yeah, it's like she's trying to make hot dogs or something. While the sheet is in the pickle, yes, that's what it's called, the acid bath take off any fire scale, I'm going to make some of the fancy bits that will make up the body of our project. Y'all know I love melting metal for any occasion. The sheet's out of the pickle and it's time to just hammer it down uniformly to its final 18 gauge happy place. Looking good. My mom and my grandfather taught me the fabrication style of silversmithing. That is, to make all the pieces of your work and build it into the finished piece. What was once your imagination becomes real. Just keep on tapping the inspiration into workable ideas. Come on, quick. Before the Oregon rain happens, we're going to go through some of the rock boxes and make a selection. I'm looking for somebody to polish that'll be kind of the centerpiece for what we're going to make. And although there's some really cool treasures in here, I think I have something in mind. We'll go ahead and pull some lots of things, I think. Do some cutting. And then see what we end up with. <laughs> I know I'm panning way too fast for most of you guys. But um, back in... Oh, whoa, there was a spider on that guy. <laughs> Late breaking news, a spider accident has been reported in the region of the rock box. No critical injuries were sustained. We'll keep you updated. Back to you, Karen. A few years ago, Steve and I went to the Richardson's Rock Beds, Rock Ranch, uh, Thunder Egg Beds for the very last time without knowing that that would be our last time allowed on the beds to do our own digging. And the Pry Day bed was where we were kind of told to go that day. It was spectacular. And the material from there is always pretty exciting. So I've got some uncut guys here. You, you can tell they've been here for a little bit. 
And I think I might cut somebody because they have the kind of structure inside, that microcosm to the macrocosm. I would love something kind of landscapey, and I have a certain vision in mind. So we'll cut and see what we get. And maybe a couple of these other guys too. You think so? Okay. This is the scourge of any YouTuber when you think that you're getting the footage and that you don't. So we got some nice cuts off of the Thunder Egg. We're going to see if what we've got shines up the way that we want to. So we're going to carry on. <laughs> And sure enough, I think I like this one better. So what I think I'd like to do is polish this and maybe do away with that right there and then kind of curve out the, the two lines to make it a little bit more organic. We'll see if this is the winner. Sick. Oh, look at the spinning parts. After cutting this slab, then cab, on the 10 inch high tech diamond saw, we're putting the shine on it with the high tech diamond flat lap. Works a treat every time. Two sunstones for the project, a Portuguese round, thanks Theo, and a ruination by Aria Akivan. And that ruination has some delicious shiller. Okay, it's time to pull the inspiration together into the final piece, the delicate details, the wonder, the splendor. One of the main objectives of the Maker's Challenge is to push yourself out of your own box or comfort zone. Since learning to facet, these settings have been a huge learning curve. 
Designing one after part of the reef is a step further for sure. Creating a little wearable reef habitat is by far the farthest I've pushed my ability to load a project with minuscule parts. coolest aspects of the challenge is to imagine a vision and take that to its fruition. Back when I was a painter, I used to love to let the paint flow and see what would happen. Just let the creation birth itself kind of in an abstract way. It's much harder to start with a hard plan and engineer its fulfillment. The rewards and the things you learn about your process and solutions you come up with to tame the beast of your creation are totally worth it. Adding the seemingly mythological brew of liver of sulfur to bring out the details we added to the reef. With a piece this extensive, most of the polishing should be done before the stones are set. Ah, uh, it broke. Start over again. <laughs> Ready for the stones. This is really where the microscope comes in handy, or the micro zone. It's wonderful to address the settings with such accuracy. Literally down to the wire, I am making a Viking weave necklace to put the pendant on, and this is sterling silver 
wire that is impossibly thin gauge. I think it's a 30 gauge. And so it's really like sewing with thread. And the Viking weave really is just like weaving silver, which actually is pretty magical and not a bad meditation as I'm not panicking that the Maker's Challenge is coming due very soon. <laughs> Deep breaths, hydrate, Steinkerns, all that good stuff. <laughs> One of the best parts is polishing the piece when it's finished. Thank you for coming along on this adventure. I'd also like to thank Theo Kellison for the invitation and for making the Makers Challenge 5 happen and being a totally inspiring partner in creative crimes as well. Go check out the other Makers Challenge videos and I encourage you to do your own Makers Challenge. If you'd like more information, check out ozonefineart.com. Cheers, Steinkern, and I'll see you down on the beach.